Hello everybody. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about one of the um, commonly used units in the uh, Aspen Plus uh, software or in, in, in processes, in, in chemical processes in general, which is the flash separation. Um, I have discussed the flash separation in details and the calculations, um, and how we do the, the calculations of the uh, outputs and the products of the, uh, of the flash units. Um, in the Microsoft Excel series before and I'm gonna put the links to the videos uh, in the uh, description uh, so that you can check them if you uh, need to uh, go into more details and in this video I'm gonna be focusing uh, not only on, on understanding how to give the inputs to the software and see the outputs because this is a very simple unit and uh, it, it's not a big deal. You can you can figure it, this out by yourself. Uh, but the point that I want to make is um, what is the difference between the calculations that Aspen Plus does and the manual calculations that we can do uh, using any commercial software uh, or simple software like uh, as a, like MATLAB or uh, or Microsoft Excel. Um, so this is going to be a very very important thing, at least to me, um, so that the user is not just a user who puts inputs and gets outputs, uh, but he understands what is the difference <clears throat> between what he can do by himself and what the software can do. Um, so uh, we're going to solve two cases, but before we go to them, I'm, I just want to um, take a quick uh, look at the um, blocks or, or that, that do flashing or, or under this, this separator um, tab here. So we have here flash 2, uh, which says it's two outlet flash, uh, it models flash drums, evaporators, and uh, etc. Um, and this is vapor liquid and vapor liquid liquid equilibrium. So it can work for two phases, um, uh, vapor and liquid. Um, and you can have more than, um, or you have to have at least two outputs out of this um, unit. Uh, flash 3 is kind of similar, but it uh, produces three outputs. Uh, so you have to have three three outlet streams out of it. Um, this works for water, oil, and um, um, and and gases, um, and it, it's it's kind of one of the the very famous cases is the uh, um, um, oil coming from from um, from the oil wells. It comes uh, including natural gas and water and oil. So you have three phases. Uh, the decanter is uh, for for two phase, uh, but two liquid phases, so it does liquid liquid equilibrium. Um, this separator is kind of uh, not a, not a, it's kind of more theoretical thing. You 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 tell him I want to separate this way, so it does the separation the way you want, uh, wh which is not the what happens in reality. And and this is kind of similar in these two cases, um, as uh, as far as I understand. I remember I, I don't remember this. I haven't done this for for a long time, so I think it's the same thing. Um, so, uh, but in these three, these are the actual cases. It does what we call the rigorous calculations, which is getting the inputs, doing detailed calculations to get the output. But here you specify what the output that you want, which which doesn't happen in real in real world. Um, so, um, what we're going to use in our case, uh, or, or in, in this system, we have um, this feed mixture is um, at uh, 0.5 atmosphere at 50 Celsius, uh, 1000 kilomoles per hour, and equimolar flow rates of benzene, toluene, xylene, and ethyl benzene. I chose these components because they are ideal components. Um, they don't have any any polarity uh, in, in them. They they have similar molecular structures, and that's why they behave kind of like um, an ideal mixture. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, get this uh, flash unit, the two phases, and take this feed stream in and uh, produce a top uh, stream at the top product and stream. Uh, the bottom product and now the connections are done um, um, and this is gonna be called B this is gonna be called T this is gonna be called um, flash um, and what I um, I need to do or the inputs that I need to define is uh, or, or are two out of four so either the temperature uh, duty vapor fraction or pressure uh, just define any two of them um, usually we, we define the temperature and pressure and the vapor fraction is an output out of the, the product because uh, we usually define the conditions. Maybe you can define the duty, but the reason we define the 
temperature and pressure because we have to make sure that the conditions uh, will enable the mixture to be broken into or split into two phases. Um, and, and this condition will be fulfilled when the mixture is between or in the wet, wet region between the bubble and dew points. So we have to specify the bubble and dew points and usually we specify them uh, by uh, or, or the, the conditions by specifying the pressure and temperature. Um, so we need to, I know that I, I need to do the separation at the same feed pressure which is 0.5 bars but I don't need, I don't know the temperature. And to do this uh, we can simply go to the main flow sheet and do what we call the stream analysis. It's not active here because the file is not run yet. Um, and what I need to do is just I'm, put, I'm putting any random temperature um, and I will run the file. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I know that this is not give, gonna, might not give a result, but I, I just want to um, go or do what we discussed in a previous video is go to analysis because it was not active before and then go to bubble and dew points um, and here I'm gonna put the 0.5 bar and 0.5005 and I'm gonna put two so it's gonna give two uh, temperatures uh, for, for each temper for each uh, pressure um, I want to see how it looks like in Celsius and now it gives me the range which is uh, 184 0.5, 202, so the average is going to be around 93, and this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the temperature as 93, and this is going to be the flashing temperature um, here at 93 Celsius, and this is a very important uh, thing, because if you operate the, the flash drum at a temperature um, not between the bubble and dew points, it's not going to give any product, it's going to go as a total liquid or with vapor fraction of zero, and comes as a vapor fraction of zero, it's total liquid coming at a, as a liquid, so it doesn't make any separation. And the same if it's if it's a vapor. Um, and and this is the the critical point of the of the flash separation. Um, now it's done, um, and we need to to think of the outputs that we're interested in. I, I of course I want to know how much uh, or what what is the flow rates and compositions of the two streams, the top and bottom streams. Uh, but there are some other things that are important here. So. Um, this is what we will see in the results tab. You'd see that the temperature is 93 Celsius, pressure is 0.5 bar. This is the vapor fraction. It's 0.376, which is the amount of vapor uh, to the amount of feed. So I have uh, 1,000 kilomoles per hour of feed. Then I have 376.57 kilomoles per hour of vapor coming out of this unit. This is the duty because I'm operating at a temperature different from the feed temperature. So I have to supply some heat. Uh, and this is the heat that uh, have been supplied to the flash unit. Um, the other output that's important here is the uh, mole fractions of the top and bottom product. This is the bottom product, which is the liquid, and this is the top product, uh, which is the vapor. Of course, I know that the more volatile component will be more uh, present in, uh, or will be in, in higher fraction in the vapor, which is the benzene and toluene. Um, and the, the other way, the xylene and ethyl benzene are the less volatile, so they're going to be more uh, present in the bottom product. The critical part of it is the Ks, uh, the K values, which is this column. Um, and this is uh, pretty important for one reason, which is what I'm going to discuss now. Uh, these are the calculations that I have been discussing in the Microsoft Excel series um, uh, and the links to the videos showing the detailed calculations of, of this uh, sheet is in the description. So if you have any uh, problems with understanding what I'm doing, please take a look at the videos. They're going to be answering any question that you're, uh, you're going to have. Um, here I calculated the bubble point and the, I'm sorry, that's not this, uh, the bubble and dew points, uh, they're, um, yeah, here's the bubble point, it's 85.6, which is close, it was 84 here in Aspen Plus, and this is 102.9, and it was 102 here, so they're kind of close, there are some kind of um, difference, but this is not a big difference, um, and, and this is giving almost uh, very close results. Um, when we do these, the flashing at 93 degrees Celsius, it gave me the uh, vapor fraction of 0.376, and this is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 0.347, and this was 3.376. So there's kind of difference now. There's around 10% or more, uh, more or less 10% uh, of difference between here and here. And if you take a look at the um, X and Ys, these are the X and Ys. It's 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 kind of close. It's 0 0.1424. This is 0 0.15, 0.23. It's 0 0.23, 0 0.32 or 31. It's 0 0.32, 0 0.297. It's 0 0.303. 
and the same here so the difference is not is not so big here um, and uh, uh, the the reason we have differences is in the k values the k values here is 2.91 <coughs> and here is 3 uh, so they, they are close but again they're they're not the same values um, and and just to understand the difference and this is the point i want to make of this video is that the difference in calculations in of flash calculations or in the bubble and dew point calculations is in the k values the rest of the calculations are um, mass balance and um, just summation of x and y equals zero so it's, it's not it's not something uh, difficult to do by yourself but the point here is that the case is where the all the core of the calculations lie in the thermodynamic calculations and the interactions between the the um, uh, molecules and everything lies in the k values um, and this is what I did here actually and in, the, in, the, in this case it's the same calculations but instead of calculating the k um, from the the properties of the system here here I'm assuming that it's an ideal system so k is uh, vapor pressure pressure divided by the total pressure I'm assuming that the activation and activity coefficient is one vigorous coefficient is one so I don't have any non-ideality in the system which which is not right uh, but it in this case it is it can be assumed right the, there are still some differences but it's not a big difference so you can get very close results to the actual res results by assuming it's an ideal system but if i take the k values here um, i copied the values and pasted them here in in this um, in this uh, part of the file and i did the calculations and you'd see that the outputs are exactly the same here in the vapor fraction 0 0.376569 it's 0.376569 the x and y are exactly the exact same values here and here and this and this confirms what i'm saying that all the difference lies in the k values if you have the k values you can do exactly the same or get the same outputs that aspen plus is getting um, so so this is the first lesson to learn that if you if the calculations are just uh, simple just the k values are, are the the important part the other thing is that uh, in case of ideal systems you can get very close results to the the actual results that you would expect but in some cases the system is not ideal and this is the second case here in this uh, flow sheet uh, i'm just gonna delete these because they are not the same uh, because this is what we're gonna do. Um, I just solved it before, so I have the same output. I have here a mixture of water, methanol, ethanol, and propanol. So these are non-ideal mixture. This is a non-ideal mixture. They are all polar components. They are hydrogen bonds, and they are a lot of interaction between the molecules. And I have kind of high pressure. It's around five bars, um, and that's why I have uh, the mixture to be non-ideal. Um, if you do the analysis to the system, you would, um, oh, I need to put the flash drum and do the same thing here. So I'm going to put the separator, um, attach it to the unit and get the, I'm not going to rename it. I'm just going to keep it S1 and S2. And here um, I'm going to put any temperature and the pressure is five bars. And this is just to run the file and be able to do the analysis and get the bubble and dew points. I calculated them assuming it's an ideal system. They were 130 and 137. Um, so this is five bars, 5.0005, and I just need two points um, and do the analysis. And uh, no, I have to wait. Um, and I'm gonna keep it at uh, in Celsius. And here you see that it's now it's different. The bubble and dew points is 128 and 132. This is 137 and 130. So these are uh, different. Uh, the, the, the range is, is, is shifted uh, between the ideal and the actual case. Again, this is because of the non-ideality in the system. So here I will do the separation at 130, but here I will do the separation at 134 as the average temperature. Um, and just just we'll we'll check what is the difference and and of course we'll expect that um, it, it's not going to be the same so I'm I'm going to do it at 130 and then run the file um, and we will check the results the first thing uh, we will check is the uh, vapor fraction and it's 0.39 here it's 0.47 so it's a big difference um, and for the uh, phase equilibrium we'll say see that the x is 0.23 um, and here's 0.3 
point uh, two two hundred and nine point seventeen point twenty five point twenty two point twenty nine is almost the same here um, and the y's will be different as well so this is uh, is giving very very different results uh, than what we got in the ideal case um, I took the k values and did the calculations and uh, it's it's giving the exact same value. You see that these y's is 0 0.267, 0 0.267, 0 0.313, 0 0.313, 0 0.245, 0 0.1744. The x is 0 0.239, 0 0.209, 0 0.253, 0 0.298. Exactly the same thing. The vapor fraction 0 0.39095, 0 0.39050095 or 94 whatever. So again, the same output if you have the k values and this again this confirms the point if you have k values they include everything all the non-idealities in the system all the interactions and everything would be included in the k values you have k values you, you can do any kind of calculations either the k values for uh, flashing for bubble or dew points um, you can do anything and 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 this uh, and this this tells us that in a system like this i cannot do the calculations manually i have to get some or do the thermodynamic calculations by myself or go to Aspen Plus get the thermodynamic values or anything but the thermodynamics would be part of this I cannot assume it's an ideal system because I'm gonna get different very very different outputs than what I should get in the actual case um, and again this uh, returns us back to the point that I made in the very beginning of this course or this series is that the very or the one of the very strong points uh, uh, in Aspen Plus is having built-in thermodynamic packages. This allows Aspen Plus to do very complex thermodynamic calculations in no time. You would spend long time to get to, to do these calculations and, do, and get the thermodynamic uh, parameters. Aspen Plus does everything um, simultaneously with uh, solving the energy and, and material balance, everything in, in, in very, very short uh, time. Um, so um, again, this, this is one point I want to make clear that you understand what's the difference between we do and between uh, what Aspen Plus does. So I hope it's clear and I'll see you in the next video inshallah. Goodbye.